Konnichiwa. Hello, everyone. This is Paul Gilbert. I'm very happy to be here today in your inside your Young Guitar magazine. I've got a brand new guitar, and I've got a brand new CD, which is called Fuzz Universe. And it has the best guitar playing I've ever done in my entire life on it, so I hope you listen to it. And uh, if you're a guitar player, which I imagine you are, uh, make sure you bend the strings. And if you want to play fast, I'll show you some secrets, so keep on watching. Well, it's it's uh, it's a five eight figure. So if you count one, two, three, four, four how does it go? It's hard to count and play at the same time. At one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. You can hear the bass and drums are sort of accenting like that. And I'm trying to outline an F sharp uh, sus4 chord. That's the kind of sound I'm going for. So an interesting rhythm, an interesting chord, and some uh, phase shifter on there. The um, the transitions in this are pretty difficult, actually. That's the mo probably the trickiest part. It's when you have to go from like this lick, which always starts with an upstroke, by the way, up, and then I uh, have to go to the G string and get into the next lick. And I want to get that D note, which would be very nice to play right there, but they wouldn't help me in the future, so I play this D note instead. So I go... And I have to do a big position shift in order to play the same lick... up there, because eventually I have to play... that lick. So I don't know if that makes any sense, but that's what I had to go through. This, by the way... I'm sorry, it's the wrong key. Where does that key... what key... Were, oh. I'm outlining my favorite chord of the record. I use a lot of minor 7 flat 5 chords in this record. And right there is a G sharp minor 7 flat 5 chord. And that's what I'm trying to outline. And so, aren't I clever? Minor 7 flat 5 in the key of uh, G sharp. Take that, guitar players that only go. Learn your minor 7 flat 5, Paul McCartney uses it, and on occasion I do too. I like that one, so I'm going to show it to him no matter what. This is probably the main riff of the song, it's an F sharp, it goes like this. Thank you. 
I didn't do the second half, but I think after that, people's brains are going to explode anyway. So the first half is enough. And I like both the quiet part and the loud part, because that's kind of two different ways of playing it. All right, now the highlights of the Bach piece, which I will show better than I did the last time. Bach loves triads, and there are some G minor triads in this piece that sound like this. And I don't pick everything. Uh, the way this is fingered with the left hand, I have the opportunity to do some hammer-ons, and I do, because it makes it easier to jump over those strings uh, with my pick if I have a little bit of time. So I'll pick two notes, and then hammer-on. I'm do the same thing and then higher octave. So. And then if you keep on going, you can get the G and the B flat on top and get the whole thing. So it's not sweet picking, but it's a really cool arpeggio and it, to me I can lock it into the groove better with that technique. beginning of the Bach piece uh, forced me to come up with some new fingerings. The notes are very normal. They're very uh, typical triads. That, you know, everybody's played those kind of notes before. But I wanted to give it vibrato at certain places, and the vibrato wouldn't work with my typical, typical fingerings, so I had to rework the fingerings. And so I'd have a finger that's available to do that. If I use the standard triad fingerings, which might be a bar here, it just wouldn't... It, I couldn't get the same kind of vibrato. So I really, the f fingering just came from me wanting to be able to vibrato it a certain way. And also uh, those little pull-offs, or the, actually hammer-ons, I'm sorry. has such a different feeling than way you'd play it if it were a triad. So uh, if, you, if you actually learn to play this, you'll really be able to tell the difference. So maybe try both. Try playing it like as a chord, which, which lends itself to one kind of phrasing, or this kind of phrase, which to me has a much more classical, true to the box sound kind of feeling. I like that. This is another phrase that I borrowed from Bach for the song Fuzz Universe, but I'll show you the Bach version. It sounds like this. Uh... And it's all alternate picking, and uh, there's a lot of inside picking, which I don't normally like, but I really have no choice. It's just the, the notes sometimes lead you into techniques that you might not normally do. And this one definitely helped me practice my inside picking. Although, again, it's still alternate picking. Starting with the downstroke. With those accents. Or inside the string. So when I do that string, that switch, it's all inside. Uh, let's try it again. Very classical sounding, I like that. Let me, just for fun, let me speed it up. And I'll give it to you one more time to see how it. And I'll give you one slow one. Another lick that I love from the Bach pieces is this one. It's in the key of D minor. It sounds like this. I just love that. It's such a cool pattern. 
and I, you probably can hear I, I use that in Fuzz Universe a bit in another key. But uh, basically, it starts with an upstroke. I pick the first three notes, alternate picking, so it's up, down, up. Then I think I hammer on. No, I pick it. And one more pick up. And then I ha maybe I hammer on the next two. Yeah, the only note that I actually hammer on is that second note when you get to the B string. So. Bach is good. One of my influences on this record was a lute composer named Silvius Weiss, who was around the same time that Bach was. And uh, I took some chords from him. Thank you, Silvius, wherever you are, for lending me your chords. Uh, and I played them, uh, when I wrote the song, um, I, I played them so I could hear both the chord and the bass note, which was usually different. Uh, there were slash chords, like I'd play an A chord, but the C sharp would be in the bass. So that's, that's sort of the whole thing would happen through the whole song. He's always putting a different bass note with the chord. Uh, the next chord would be an E chord, but B is in the bass, so he's not using the low E, just using the B. So that way your bass line becomes like so. Uh, the next one, had the uh, bass note was a B flat, and he had, that was actually the third of F sharp. If you play F sharp chord, one, two, three. So, so it's a lot of explanation, but basically here are the chords that I got from Sylvius Weiss. I thought those were really cool chords, and he played them great, had all sorts of melodies with them. And I decided to do it in a rhythm that went da 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 da. So it sounded like. Uh, the only thing that happened is I wanted to make it less cloudy. To me, when I, when I play that whole thing on the guitar, it works pretty well, but since I have a bass player in the band, um, I, why not have the bass player play those bass notes, and I can go and do a little higher voicing. And this is sort of influenced by listening to a lot of Pete Townsend stuff. Pete Townsend tends to play higher voicings. So instead of playing that whole chord with the bass note, I decided to play a higher bass player play the C sharp. So I just played, instead of, I played it up higher. And it gave me more clarity to the mix. And it, I, I love that sound. So without the bass note, <laughs> and uh, if you add the bass note in there, it rocks. The higher voicing would be...
So when I was listening to um, you know the, the Sylvius Weiss lute music and these Bulgarian singers, I kept finding that my my ear would sort of uh, perk up whenever I heard this one chord progression. And I was going, oh, what's that? And I try to figure it out. And it was usually uh, the same thing. I, I just found out I really like this chord progression, where you take, uh, for example, a, like a D major chord, but you change the bass note to C. So it goes like that. So that's the first chord. The next chord, would, the bass goes down a half step. And I play, uh, it's actually another slash chord, it's G with a third in the bass. So it's a G over B. And that's it. There's those two chords together. But I found if I kept going down chromatically with the bass line, then I, it could, yeah, I could get really cool melodies over it. So um, let me just play that to get it in your ear once. I'll go like... That kind of idea. And over that, I put the arpeggios. I tried to come up with how to outline. Um... And that goes with. And, just, and that inspired that whole long arpeggio sequence. came from just those chords. And, and it kept on going down. And uh, I had the bass player actually play a version of that, and we ended up overdubbing some piano, and it sounds beautiful. So for Blue Orpheus, I just wanted to play something in uh, E Dorian. I used a delay, a delay pedal, uh, set to a dotted eighth, and that way I can play eighth notes like this. And if I turn the pedal on, it sort of makes them into sixteenth notes, it gives me an interesting pattern. So I'll just do what I did on the record. I'll sort of improvise something in E Dorian and see what the delay gives me. <laughs> So the technique that I got from Bach earlier on, that G minor triad, I thought, you know, you can do more than G minor, but you could do other keys. So I've never been very good at augmented arpeggios, and in this song I did one. It was an E augmented, and I decided to use that same technique, where I'm hammering on in three octaves. And the pattern I did, let's see if I can figure it out. It's a. Uh, I did a little bend at the end. I like the sound of that. I was going like a. That's pretty cool. Alright, so, uh, let's see. 
Yeah, I think these are more more chords that I sort of got from listening to those Bulgarian singers and to the lute piece. But uh, a lot of inversions, like the first chord, it's basically a G chord with a with a minor third in the bass. A little answer. Then I play a F chord, A in the bass. Then I play a F chord, a minor third in the bass, a little answer, and then a G uh, sus4 and a G7. An answer there. And I'm using the low E string as sort of a rhythmic tool, like to give it that rhythmic sound. So, uh, and hopefully it works with the chords not too badly. So here we go. I'll, I'll play it for you once. <coughs> So the, um, the first part is actually an A Lydian, that kind of sound, and I wanted to do it in fives, where it can go like, that kind of pattern. So it's very mathematical, but I'll play, see if I can play it slow. I'll do it one more time, see if I can slow it down a little more.
there we go. This is in 7 8. It starts up with this chord. Let's go. Then a little pull off lick. Then two chords. And. So. The fingering is actually pretty easy because you just use these two fingers with a, with a position shift. So. And then this one goes. Then I've got this big pull off. So it's kind of a, I don't know, heavy metal technique for playing a jazz song. I'm, I'm sure no real jazz player would ever play that. To me, like it feels more like a Richie Blackmore smoke on the water kind of riff or something. <laughs> But I like that. It's kind of jazz notes with a rock feel. So all I'm trying to do is outline these, this very simple chord progression. I'm just going like... But I'm trying to be a little trickier with the way I outline it. So that's the underlying chord progression. But I'm uh, having fun with the bass because I'm going like... I'm introducing each chord with a couple bass notes. Let's see if I go... Play it one more time. Let's see. figure it out from there. But I will show you the chord. It's kind of a nice chord. Sharp 9, sharp 13 maybe? Sharp 9, flat 13? 
Uh, it's got a lot of extensions on it, and it's jazzy. So I want to tell you a little bit about my brand new guitar. I was actually on the Mr. Big Tour and I had a day off in my hotel room and I just got out Photoshop and I couldn't resist trying different colors to the fireman. And I decided to sort of take red and orange and put them together and we got this finish. I think it looks awesome. I love this guitar. I actually wrote most of the album with this guitar and I played a lot of it with it as well. Um, it really, uh, for most of my life, I've been a humbucker user. I've always played humbucker guitars. But uh, with these, I wanted to experiment with single coils. And they're not true single coils because they're, um, they, uh, they're not noisy. They don't, a real single coil actually makes quite a bit of noise, uh, quite a bit of hum. And these don't. They're hum-canceling single coils. And so uh, they're super, super quiet. But I think the, um, the picking attack, especially in the lower strings, like if I do uh, one of those low, heavy kind of... Uh, those come out really clean. Or that one, like, the thing I did in Fuzz Universe. The, uh, Those things come out really, really nice and clean, even though I've got a lot of overdrive, a lot of fuzz on the sound. I can still get a lot of definition using the single coils. And uh, Demarzio actually just came up with a brand new single coil. Uh, I, don't know, I don't know if we even have a name for it yet, but they've been calling it an HS5 in their emails to me. And, uh, and that's what I've been using here, and it sounds amazing. Um, for almost a whole record, actually, I've been using the bridge pickup. And to me, to, to, to do that with a single coil guitar is, uh, really shows how cool the pickup is. Uh, because this, this, coil, or this uh, pickup can be pretty harsh uh, on a regular single coil. So DeMarzio did a great job in combining the clarity and also um, you know, not having it be too trebly. Just a nice balance of clarity and, and attack. And uh, I love them. And of course, the, the neck pickup sounds great too, the uh, arpeggio stuff. smooth and I even use the middle one sometimes it's nice to have like a, if you want to come down a little bit so a lot of great sounds in this guitar thank you Ibanez thank you DiMarzio you guys rock young guitar readers and people of the earth Thank you for watching me play guitar. Uh, I promise to practice these songs and get them right so when I play them live, it'll rock your face right off. And let's see. I'm really happy with this record. Uh, the, the songs were really difficult for me to write. It took me a long time. Uh, but at the end, I was really happy with the results. I think it's got some of the, my best guitar melodies, some of my most insane guitar playing. And it really took me out of my comfort zone. I had to come up with a lot of new patterns and licks to make it all work. And uh, it's one of the best guitar lessons I've ever had to do this album, Fuzz Universe. And uh, I hope you can learn some of the songs and play it too. It's got a lot of different stuff on it. Fast, slow, everything in between. Loud, soft. Uh, influences from Johnny Cash to Bach. So uh, enjoy Fuzz Universe. And let me play some rock and roll guitar for you. Rock and roll! Let's see. <laughs> Turn the tuning peg. There we go. 